is goodness in the making. Trust Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale for your first alert. You're watching News 12 Live at 5 continues. You might trust the games your child is playing, but what about the ads that pop up inside those games? Just ahead, how some games targeted towards kids could expose them to some adult content. But first, we've got some rain rolling into our area. This coming up in just about 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Riley. The games and apps our children play with every day could be exposing them to inappropriate ads. Even if you know the game your child is playing on a tablet or phone is safe, the ads that pop up can be targeted towards a much older audience and you can't stop it. Our Hallie Turner is live in our social media center. And Hallie, you actually downloaded a kid's app and played it to test this yourself. What kind of ads did you see? Well, this game looks pretty innocent. I mean, you're building a hotel, but it's targeted towards kids. And then all of a sudden, in just a minute, an adult screen will pop up where they're doing explicit content and inappropriate things. And they're leading you. To, some may think that someone is hiding something if you see something like this or even lying. But before you roll your eyes, take a look at how easy this is for something like this to appear on your child's tablet. Nine minutes. That's how long it took from the moment I downloaded this app meant for 12-year-olds to build a hotel before it, this appeared on my screen. To a 12-year-old, law enforcement says this looks harmless. It's animated characters kids are used to seeing on a screen, and that's the point. It asks two questions at the end of the ad for your child to pick how the ending goes. Officials say the ending is only the beginning of a gateway to a darker side of child play online. And when it comes to cyber child porn tips and cases, it starts with ads like these. It is not hard to get on one of these apps. Probably within five minutes, you will have someone soliciting you to meet up for pictures or videos. They, a lot of times, will send unsolicited pictures or videos. The number of people on these apps and, and the number of people on various websites that are looking to engage children in sex trafficking sex meetups, whatever the case may be, uh, it's just, it's overwhelming. And these ads can be found on any app that allows ads, so it isn't always enough to vet your kids' games. But coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we're sitting down with law enforcement and answering questions from parents on ways you can fight back and protect your kids. All right, thanks, Hallie. Something very concerning here and almost something hiding in plain sight. Yeah, as a mom of a 13-year-old, this is absolutely terrifying. And this is something, by the way, that isn't new. The I-Team uncovered this a couple of years ago. It keeps happening. So these game makers aren't filtering these ads out. So it's not like this is a problem that they aren't aware of. Absolutely. It's That's the scariest part yeah, to me. Yeah, you just never know. This right. is something to check on as well. Thanks, Hallie. Two schools in our area are dealing with weapons found on campus. At Burke County Middle School, a student was caught just before 10 o'clock this morning with a weapon. The sheriff's office says the student brought a weapon to school, but there was no disruption to the school or any lockdown. And at Cross Creek High School, Principal Sherry Darden says a strong odor was noticed as a student entered the school by a Richmond County school resource, school resource officer. Now, during a search of that student, a weapon was found. Investigations are ongoing into both of these cases. Israeli airstrikes, thanks, Abby. The student pledge against gun violence is a national program that honors the role young people have played through their own decisions to help reduce gun violence. And in Orangeburg County, over 700 students at Lake Marion High School signed that same pledge, promising they would never bring a gun to school and to never use a gun to settle a personal problem. I just want to encourage our children to know that they can live. I have spoken to so many that the violence is so great in our communities that some don't feel that they'll live beyond 21. But I want to encourage them that they can live full, fruitful lives. They just have to make that effort to, to basically, like what we're doing today, take a pledge. Take a pledge that you're not going to bring a gun to school, that you're not going to use a gun to solve a conflict, and that you'll encourage your friends to do the same. Green also shared with students the will to live is better than the will to have a gun.
This morning, local leaders came out to connect with students to discuss the importance of reading during a literacy event called Real Men Do Read. The event, hosted by Wheelis Road Elementary, invited leaders to read books to students and tell them about their careers. News 12 stopped by and spoke with the principal on why this event is so important. It's important to, for our students to see community members uh, love reading and love learning. It's always great to get into the classrooms and interact with your students. Now, Robinson says the next literacy event will be towards the end of the year called Beauty, Brains, and Books. The elementary school will ask female community leaders to come in and read to students. Well, more than 300,000 acres of Georgia land protecting some of the most endangered species in the state. Just ahead, how one group is working to preserve its history. Riley? And if you are heading out this evening, we'll just stay mostly dry, but decent rain chances for tomorrow. We'll have a look at that and the severe weather threat just after the break. Members from the Good Shepherd Valley, the Okefenokee Swamp is home to some of Georgia's most threatened and endangered species. It's also one of the largest and most primitive swamps in the country. Some experts say it wouldn't be in such pristine condition today if it weren't for a little-known group of black conservationists. Simone McKinney shows us how researchers are now looking to preserve this bit of history. It's so important, especially for Georgia history, um, and we would hate to have these things again to, to go hidden because it's not not absent it's hidden the civilian conservation corps was a nationwide program formed to help lift the united states out of the great depression also known as the ccc it was established by franklin d roosevelt in 1933 for single young men with the goal of improving america's public lands forests and parks these programs were a big deal you know again nationwide I mean, there was only about 6% representation um, of African Americans in, in the program. Again, not a shocking figure. My preliminary research so far, I would see that people who were based in the Northeast or the Midwest would be sit, sent to Mississippi and Georgia and Florida and Alabama uh, because they faced discrimination and they couldn't be integrated into these all-white camps um, in the Midwest and Northeast. Jess Neal is the project archivist for a new program shedding light on Company 1433. The group of almost 200 all-black environmentalists who helped establish the Okefenokee Refuge. They were able to be successful. We do have the Okefenokee um, uh, Refuge now. Uh, so I think in part they were very successful. The project aims to collect, preserve, and digitize records on Company 1433 and the development of an eighth grade curriculum for teachers in counties surrounding the swamp to share the research's findings with their students. Um, just wanting to invite people into this project. This is not a project that we can do independently. We will be leaning on community um, in Georgia and elsewhere because the hope is that this can be replicated um, in other states and that the stories of other black camps, even if they were not all black, but how those, those integrated camps, the experiences of folks there as well. Now, the swamp stretches from the Florida Georgia line all the way to Raycross. It's about five hours from Augusta and about an hour west of Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we all know that cyber scammers target older people, but turns out some scams work better on young people, and they are working. I'm Jamie Tucker. I'll have the story coming up. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. It's Bill Smith, limited to only the finest in men's clothing. Scammers will stop at nothing to take your hard-earned money. It might be through installing something onto your computer or tricking you into sending them money. And you might think it could never happen to you, but as our consumer tech reporter Jamie Tucker explains, it happens to everyone at any age. And you might be surprised by who gets scammed the most. What the Tech, sponsored by Augusta Preparatory Day School. When you picture a victim of cybercrime, you may think of someone older. And while it's true, people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s do fall for a lot of cyber scams. Turns out they're a lot savvier than their kids and grandkids. Baby boomers are more likely to fall for financial scams, computer scams. The subscription of your computer security services has ended. Callers who say there's something wrong with their computer and demand you give them remote access to fix it. Instead, the scammer installs malware or ransomware or steals personal information. As seniors are also more likely to send scammers money using gift cards. Boomers lose the most money, but they don't get scammed as often as their kids. 
People in their 20s and 30s are more than twice as likely to be swindled. Millennials are most likely to fall for shopping scams, employment scams, romance scams, and maybe most surprising, scams where the caller pretends to be someone from the government. We have to issue an arrest warrant against you. I've talked to several 20-somethings who fall hook, line, and sinker for this elaborate scam, where the caller says their social security number was used to rent a car that was later involved in a crime. Millennials are more likely to give the scammer their social security number, address, and full name. Teens and preteens are targeted using sextortion scams. Someone they meet online, on social media, video game communities, ask for nude photos, and then threatens to share them with all of their friends unless they send money in the form of gift cards or through Venmo or the Cash App. While younger people fall for these scams a lot more frequently than older people, seniors actually lose a lot more money than younger people, probably because they have more money to lose. That's What the Tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. The Better Business Bureau says millennials reported losing anywhere from $100 to $200 due to cyber scams, while seniors lose, on average, more than $400. Well, after a huge slate of games yesterday, six, six of our local softball teams, that's a lot. It is. And even into Thursday, still alive in their respective Super Regional bracket. Yeah, good for all of them. News 12 Sports Director Dan Booth has the latest on the teams who have already punched their tickets to Columbus and those still working to get there. Dan? Marathon will when tonight's games are in the books. We'll know exactly how many of our local softball teams will still have a chance to win state. We have now five that have already punched their tickets to Columbus. Just moments ago, Grovetown won their Super Regional in Marist, so they're going to be there in Class 6A. Harlem is representing our area in Class 3A, and three of our teams are going at it in Class 1A Division 2. Glasscock County, Washington Wilkes, and the American Manual County Institute. Earlier today, News 12 Nick Proto and I caught up with Glasscock County head coach Johnny Cantrell to discuss their successful season and the fact that his Panthers are going back to Columbus for the second year in a row. When we got beat out of Columbus last year, we told them before we walked off the field, we're going to throw everything we can at you next year, so this is not going to be a surprise. Um, and we started making our schedule and circling teams who were in Columbus, you know, like a wish list of who we really wanted to, to face. And luckily we were able to get a bunch of those, and, uh, and that's what got us ready. You can watch that full 25-minute interview in its entirety on our website, WRDW.com. Lakeside, Swainsboro, and Washington County are all waiting to hear those scores in. Screven County literally just was just eliminated. Got that text from Coach Ron Duncan. So sadly, the Gamecocks are out. But I'll have a full breakdown of all of this action tonight at 11. That's it for sports. We'll be right back after this quick break. Cracks in your brick. Crack. A helicopter landing at the Children's Hospital caused a glass door there to burst today. According to people who were there and saw it at the time, Taylor Martin breaks down what happened. An official statement from leaders over at Children's Hospital says the glass bursting causing some might cause some minor injuries to people in the area at the time. This is the damage left behind from the incident just outside of the Chick-fil-A inside the Children's Hospital. Some people we spoke to tell us it happened just around noon when the wind from a helicopter landing caused debris to fly and hit the window. They also told us it was quite nerve-wracking, but officials tell us only one person received injuries which were treated immediately after it happened. Officials also tell us they are still investigating the situation and repairing the damage. Certainly a surprise since choppers land there all the time. I'm sure it was a pretty scary moment, but glad everybody's going to be okay. Two students in two different districts were found with weapons in schools today. In a letter sent home to Cross Creek parents, a strong odor alerted a school system police officer. During the search, they say a weapon was also found. The students will be addressed by the code of conduct. They also said that. Meanwhile, in Burke County Middle School, the sheriff's office had to respond to a firearm call. They say a student brought a weapon to school and it was confiscated. The sheriff's office says the investigation is ongoing. Stick around. Coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we'll tell you how your child could be exposed to illicit content right in the palm of their hand. We'll explain. And for the first time in a long time, we actually have the risk for some thunderstorms tomorrow, and some of them could be on the strong side. We'll have a look at that full forecast next. 70 Monday and Tuesday in those cooler mornings back down in the mid-40s.
Games or apps marketed to kids may hold a portal to the dark web. Even though the apps may be rated G, the ads don't have to be. Law enforcement says it's a way for predators to lure children into their trap in plain sight. Hallie Turner joins us from the social media desk. And Hallie, you followed the ads today. What did you find? Well, in just a second when this loads, it's going to be an app on here that looks pretty innocent. You're able to build a hotel, and it's targeted for young kids, but we have to blur out, as you can see, what comes right when an ad pops up, and it's on your child's screen, excuse me, so it'll start right here as a game for hotels, and then just a second, in a blink of an eye, there are things that are going on your child's screen that are inappropriate things, and are things that law enforcement say are a gateway. She doesn't want to show her face. This mom, like a lot of moms, says she allows some screen time after a long day of school. When my son gets home from school, usually after like learning all day, he wants to kind of decompress and play on his tablet for a little bit. She does her best to keep both of her kids out of harm's way when it comes to playing online. See these programs for kids, like, you know, his tablet has a whole kid's interface that he cannot get out of without having a passcode. Um, you know, so it's like you want to think that that would be safe. Reality is, it's not. Law enforcement says the ads on children's apps are the gateway to the darker side of the internet. You will start seeing these ads get snuck in that seem on the level, or, or on the surface rather, seem that they're harmless. Ads for adult apps like My Fantasy start out like a story where you have a choice to pick how the story ends. Chief Kitchen says within three clicks, it's a different world. No longer are they dealing with an app. Now they're dealing with a live person on the other end. Now they're dealing with someone that is chatting with them. He says they're finding criminals on Omega chat roulette chat random lemon eight TikTok, and more the number of people on various websites that are looking to engage children in sex trafficking it's overwhelming and there is no way to stop it you can put the brakes on it you can do whatever you want to they'll backdoor through the through the ads on that Now, parents are asking how to be proactive, and Kitchen says you have to have those hard conversations and check their phones. And while they're battling this growing issue on the front lines, the best thing you can do is take action when you see something and send a tip into a report of cyber tip. Anyone can go to this site and report a cyber tip to law enforcement, and we'll have that link on our website at WRDW.com. Certainly concerning, you think you vet the apps, but if the ads are free reign, it's really hard to tell what they're going to be looking at, Hallie. And we're going to have that link on our website. You can visit cybertip.org and click. You fill out that report by clicking report incident. Getting long-term hotel guests out of hotels. The debate continues between city leaders coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock. First of how to get long-term hotel guests out of hotels. It's been an issue for Augusta leaders for months now. We're talking about people who've been living in these hotels for weeks or months without paying, and the issue came to a head today with different departments. Craig Allison was there and joining us now live off Washington and Stevens Creek Roads. This is where a lot of hotel owners are expressing their concerns over overstaying guests. They say for the past two to three years that the issue has been calling the sheriff's office and then not being able to have those overstaying guests that turn into tenants removed immediately. Now, today's meeting started off with a lot of confusion. Richmond County Sheriff's Office deputy said that their office is more than willing to respond to any calls, despite the sheriff himself previously stating the current ordinance needed more tea. After the back and forth, the deputy said he was only called to represent the office 10, mi 10 minutes before the meeting kicked off. Regardless, hotel owners want more direct help with managing their guests. Now, commissioners are going back to the sheriff's office to just set things in stone and ask whether they need a new ordinance or just more municipal support. In Augusta, Craig Allison, on your side. Certainly it's frustrating for all those business owners along Washington Road. Craig, thanks for the update there. On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. Six of our local softball teams came into today still alive in their respective super regional brackets. When tonight's games are in the books, we'll know exactly how many of our local teams will still have a chance to win a state championship. We have five teams that have already punched their tickets to Columbus. Grovetown won their super regional at Marist today just a little while ago, and they're in Class 6A. Harlem is representing our area in Class 3A, and in Class 1A Division 2, we have Glasgow. 
Hancock County, Washington Wilkes, and ECI. News 12's Nick Proto and I caught up with Glasscock County head coach Johnny, uh, Johnny Cantrell to discuss the fact that his Panthers are going back to Columbus for the second year in a row, which is something they spoke into existence. In 21, we took him to Columbus and walked him around and said, hey, this is where we were trying to get you. If the next year we make it, and now we get to come back. And that's a big deal. Um, and it means a ton to them. I mean, they've been smiling, you know, since. They're, they're worn out. They're a little tired. But, they, you know, they've been smiling since we wrapped up. You can watch that full 25-minute interview on our website, WRDW.com. I'm still working on confirming scores for Swainsboro and Washington County, who are in action today as well. Lakeside, Screven County, and Jefferson County seasons all came to an end just a little while ago. I'll have a full softball playoff breakdown tonight at 11. Now, on the high school football front, tomorrow night, the Class 2A Region 3 showdown between Strom Thurmond and Silver Bluff is our Under the Lights game of the week. It's not often you see two top 10 teams in the same region. We'll hear from the Bluff ahead of the big game later on this evening. Thanks, Dan. Looking forward to it. The award-winning junior players of Augusta heading to the Georgia Theater Conference today. Last year, the group performed Sister Act. They won, then advanced to the regional competition to compete in the community theater division, and that was against adults. And now they're getting set to perform Sisters, and here's a sneak peek. Lead me. So this show is about a family gathering in their attic after the death of their matri matriarch. And once again, if they win, they advance and go head-to-head -head again against adults. So we wish them luck as they head for Athens in this first phase. Riley. Best of luck to them. We are looking at a chance for rain and possibly some thunderstorms tomorrow. But beautiful weather this weekend. Then look at that full seven-day forecast just after the break. This weekend, then look at that full seven-day forecast just after the break. The bluff ahead of the big game later on this evening. Thanks, Dan. Looking forward to it. The award-winning junior players of Augusta heading to the Georgia Theater Conference today. Last year, the group performed Sister Act. They won, then advanced to the regional competition to compete in the community theater division, and that was against adults. And now they're getting set to perform Sisters, and here's a sneak peek. Lead me. So this show is about a family gathering in their attic after the death of their matri matriarch. And once again, if they win, they advance and go head-to-head -head again against adults. So we wish them luck as they head for Athens in this first phase. Riley. Best of luck to them. We are looking at a chance for rain and possibly some thunderstorms tomorrow. But beautiful weather this weekend. Then look at that full seven-day forecast just after the break. The first alert team, the best in Georgia. Augusta's best luxury dealer, Jim Hudson, now brings you the best GM brand. Cadillac, the best of the best. Now open, Jim Hudson Cadillac on Washington Road. And right now, during the Made to Move sales event, get 2.9% financing plus 1,500 purchase allowance or payments from $379 a month. Cadillacs, over 60 available, 2.9% or $379 a month at Jim Hudson Cadillac on Washington Road. Experience it once and you'll never forget it. We got you. Well, are you ready to trick or treat? It's happening right now over at Evanstown Center Park, giving you a live look at the event. Lots of people in their costumes. That is a big turnout. They have more than 100 candy stations right there, food vendors, even a barco ween. Between, uh, that's an event for pet owners with pet safe Halloween treats, and it's free. It ends at 8 o'clock, so you still have plenty of time to head out there to Columbia County and enjoy the evening. And parents, don't worry if you missed out on this event. On WRDW.com, we have a full list packed full of free and upcoming events all around our area. Don't forget the Duck Dash coming up Saturday over at Savannah Raptors Pavilion. We're going to update these whenever more events are announced. So let's send things over to First Alert Meteorologist uh, Riley Hale with a, a quick look at our weather. And you mentioned the Duck Dash, Richard. It looks like we are going to see great weather this weekend for the Duck Dash. It is going to be a little bit breezy at times, especially the later we head into that event. But once it gets going at 10 a.m., temps will be in the 50s. Most likely have a steady wind close to 10 miles an hour. And then once we get closer to race time at noontime, temperatures should be in the low 70s. Sunshine, a little bit of a west breeze, but beautiful conditions. Should see uh, generally blue skies out there on the Augusta Canal. So, hey, head on out to Savannah Rapids Pavilion Saturday morning. Love to see you and definitely going towards a great 
cause. Here's a look at our forecast. Uh, a quick update on what is now Tropical Storm Tammy. Just going to briefly mention this to you. Luckily, Tammy is expected to turn off towards the north as we head this weekend, and then a northeast turn expected early next week. So luckily, this is going to stay away from uh, the U.S., and no worry for us here locally. Tomorrow, though, remember, you do need the umbrella. We are going to bring in the chance for showers before lunchtime Friday, and then a wave of thunderstorms will be possible in the afternoon. Most of those should clear out by Friday evening in time for those high school football games. And then once again, beautiful fall weather for the weekend. Riley, thanks so much. Our next live update comes at 7 o'clock on NBC 26. Then we have more news tonight at 11. We'll see you then.